Today I'm going to teach you about the technical and physical properties of glass. I'm going to delve into the thermal, optical, chemical, electrical, and mechanical properties so you can choose the ideal glass for your next project. Hi, I'm Natasha, glass guru with Two Way Mirrors. Each week we bring you new lessons on glass based off our expertise in the optical industry. Let's get started. First up, the thermal property of glass. Why is it important to know about temperatures for glass? Temperature changes in glass can result in glass shattering. If temperature is applied unevenly to the glass, the glass will have differing levels of internal pressure, making it prone to fracturing. Cool glass can also easily break. So it is important to know what types of temperature change your glass is able to sustain. To figure this out, you will need to find out how much your glass expands in differing temperatures. So you would have to check its CTE. CTE stands for coefficient of thermal expansion. What else would you use CTE for? Expansion levels of glass and materials that are closely installed with it. It is essential that the close materials and glass have matching thermal rates or the glass could fracture. I mean, if you think about it, if one material is expanding while the other is not, it would create a lot of pressure up to the point of breaking. To make things easier, when purchasing glass from a manufacturer typically states the maximum temperature and thermal shock resistance the glass can handle. Thermal shock resistance. In this case, it is the temperature change that glass can handle and remain stable. This is typically tested by taking heated glass and submerging it in an ice bath. An example of glass that would need high thermal shock resistance is glass that would vary in temperature, from being subjected to high, warm lighting during the day and cold snow at night. There is also an option for glass strengthening for those who want to ensure their glass can handle larger temperature changes. We will dive deep into that in another video. Next up, optical properties. To determine how fast light travels through the glass, we use a higher refractive index. A higher refractive index means a lower speed of light through the glass. To determine the amount of light passing through the glass, we measure transmission. And to determine how the light is converted to heat, we use the absorption property. Fun fact, this is why tinted glasses are better in the sun. They also typically black out most of the UV lighting coming through the glasses, so it's ideal for protecting your eyes from the damaging sun. When mirror coatings are applied to glass, you can also measure the reflection over a different ranges of light. For instance, our glass first surface mirror product has an enhanced aluminum mirror coating. And when measuring the percent reflection, it is tested from 0 nanometers to 1,700 nanometers. This is huge when ordering glass and mirrors for specialized equipment. Enhanced aluminum has a super high reflection from 400 nanometers to 1,700 nanometers, but is not great from 250 nanometers to 350 nanometers. This range is also known as the UV spectrum. So if you need an optical flat mirror that also has a high reflection in the range, you'd want a UV enhanced glass first surface mirror instead. Let's move on to the chemical properties. Soda lime, borosilicate glasses contain alkaline metal ions. When exposed to water vapor over a period of time, the alkaline ions will move to the surface of the glass. This is called alkaline leaching. What does that look like though? Well, it makes the glass have a thick cloudiness, so it is important to know what your glass will be exposed to. How can this be prevented? You can place a barrier coating on your glass, which will help much of the reaction. This is why our mirrors all have a dielectric coating on top, to prevent the mirror coating from getting damaged over time. Otherwise, the coating will begin to erode or rust. The dielectric coating is so thin there are usually no specifications on it because it is only a couple atoms thick. Let's head over to the electrical properties. When the glass is used in an electrical insulator, you will need to know the volume resistance. This is a measurement of resistance between the opposite faces of a centimeter cube of glass. 
This is also measured in ohms. Since clear glass has little capability to send electric currents through it, it makes a great insulator for electrical equipment. However, it gets more complicated when you start to add mirrors or clear coatings to your glass. For example, we rooted heavily into the glass industry and specialize in many different types of mirror coatings. One type of glass we sell is the beam splitter mirror. It has a semi-transparent mirror coating on it. My clients often ask me if there is metal in the mirror coating because they worry about the electrical interference. In most applications, the metal in the coating does not cause any problems as long as the equipment can adjust to the tolerance. Based on the conductivity of the glass, the equipment will work properly. To measure the electrical energy glass can store, you would determine the dielectric constant of the glass. This is done by gathering the ratio of stored energy in a condenser with glasses to dielectric, then comparing it to energy stored with air as a condenser. What would we use this for? Electrical and electronic devices. Last but not least, let's head over to mechanical properties. This will be used to determine how much stress glass can handle. Let's first define stress. No, not the kind you get in traffic. Stress can be defined as a perpendicular force per unit area applied to an object in a way that compresses or stresses the object. Strength is the ability of glass to handle stress. Moms must be super strong then. Most glass breakage happens as a result of tensile stress failure. Strengthened glass will have a high tensile strength. That is one result why glass comes in a variety of thicknesses, so they can handle the stress that is put on them. Those are the physical properties of glass. Using all five properties, you can find your perfect glass. Also, you can reach out to any glass manufacturer for these values. So don't feel overwhelmed if this sounded like a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to message us on opticalmirror.com. Or give us a call. We have sales engineers who are always available to answer your questions. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Comment below and let me know which video you want me to make next. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. To make this video, we recently painted our studio wall chroma key green so we can make our videos faster and easier for all of you. I crafted my script in Google Doc and exported it to my iPad using PromptSmart Pro teleprompter software. I love it because it is voice activated, which makes video creation process even faster. Sure, sometimes it skips ahead, but I do have an amazing cameraman who moves the script back when I need it. I'm also using the presidential teleprompter to read my script from, so I can get flawless camera quality through the glass and see the text really easily. Not to mention, I'm able to make direct eye contact with the camera. It's awesome. I'll leave you a link below in the description so you can check it out. Back there? Yeah, that's where the real magic happens. When a client orders from our website, we print it immediately and start processing it right away. Most orders go out the same day or the next day, depending on how busy we are. Now, I wanna hear from you. Let me know what you think of our setup. Would you use a teleprompter mirror if you thought you could deliver your lines like I did? Comment below and let me know. I'd love to make an entire course on this. I'm Natasha with Two Way Mirrors. Peace out.